Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to give a brief overview, a very quick overview of this Go Ethereum repository, which is basically the execution layer uh, implementation of the Ethereum protocol. So before it used to be both, it used to account for both the consensus and execution stuff for Ethereum, but now uh, these two are uh, decoupled. So now this only deals with the execution layer implementation. So just a brief overview of like what all things uh, Ethereum has. So Ethereum, as you know, is a blockchain and which is basically like a chain of blocks and each of the blocks have the list of transactions ordered in a meaningful manner. So to create these blocks, there needs to be consensus among all the network participants. And these network participants are basically the miners, which used to be called miners. Now they are called validators because of the proof of stake consensus change. So these hold the global database, which corresponds to Ethereum's uh, contract addresses and all the uh, smart contracts that have ever been deployed in Ethereum. So assuming a current state of Ethereum network, we need to be able to apply the changes on it to get the uh, next state of the Ethereum network, which is represented by the next block. So this applying of this change is essentially called uh, the execution side of things. So once you do this execution, then your state changes. An example of a change of state might be that I have you know, five ETH and you have 10 ETH and uh, you transferred five ETH to me. So now right now I have 10 ETH and then you have five ETH. So that is a new state. So, you know, this, information uh, in the form of a transaction has to be part of a block and this block represents this execution layer change and that execution aspect happens in this repository okay so now i'm in the repo one of the first things of any golang project you can see is basically to find the main.go file so here uh, this is usually inside the cmd folder which is basically the command folder so here as you can see there are multiple commands so the most important one is this uh, get command, get main.go. So using this main.go command, essentially you can start a Go Ethereum node locally. And there are other commands as well. For example, this ABI gen. So this can create Go binding of uh, any smart contract you want, which makes it easier for Go developers to interact with smart contracts. Uh, similarly, there are quite a few other commands, but the most important one is this get. So I talked about the state change before and the fact that the execution happens inside this. The important file is inside this core folder. So inside core, you go to VM and then evm.go. And here, as you can see, there are there is this struct called EVM. And here, as you can see, EVM is the Ethereum virtual machine base object and provides the necessary tools to run a contract on the given state with the provided context. It should be noted that any error, uh, so that's basically how uh, it does the error handling. So it's the, it basically reverts and consumes all the gas. So if there is any error, it just it will just consume the gas, but and it will revert to the previous state. Okay, and so we have this uh, Ethereum, uh, this EVM struct, and this has this state DB, which is uh, essentially, which gives access to the underlying state, which is basically the database. And here there are certain number of functions which it implements. The important one in this scenario is this call function. So call executes any contract associated with the address, which we do, which we give here, uh, with the given input as parameters. And it also handles any necessary uh, transfer required and the necessary steps to create accounts. So any contract call you do, that ends up here essentially. So if you do a contract call in a particular address, uh, so every Ethereum contract has its own address. So you give that address here uh, along with the corresponding input and then it basically executes it here. So it checks if it is a pre-compiled contract and then uh, there are some deb debug options. If it is not, then uh, you can essentially like, you know, create a new contract like this as well. So initialize a new contract and set the code here. And here it is creating the new contract, setting its code, and then 
uh, it is actually running this interpreter.run, which eventually ensures that it is actually part of the state. Uh, another function is this create function. So create creates a new contract using the code as deployment code. So you call this create function and uh, you give this code and this becomes, this creates a new contract and this is essentially the byte code of that particular contract. There you can see there is this create and create two. So create is essentially, if you call create, you won't know the address of the contract beforehand because it is, you know, as you can see, the contract address is getting created here on the fly. Whereas create two, using create two, you would know the address beforehand. Okay, so this is the uh, EVM side of things. Another interesting file is this ETH client. So, so this is basically an uh, RPC client using which you can interact with any uh, Ethereum node. So this gives the functionality like, you know, what is the chain ID and you can uh, query blocks by hash can query block by number. Uh, you can get information about blocks, uh, the peer counts. You can also check balance at a particular address using this function. So you can basically go over it and see how these work under the hood. And another uh, important file is this config. So config.go. So as you know, for a blockchain, the first block is called the Genesis block. Whatever you define inside the Genesis block that sets the tone for the rest of the blockchains blocks so genesis block and its related configuration is very important so in this case this file this params uh, this config.go file that has this hashes of uh, the mainnet the ethereum mainnet and you know few other test nets like rinkaby or Gurley test nets so this one sets the hashes so that the this software knows what exactly is this genesis file of a particular network and then another interesting thing is the here this mainnet chain config which is a type of chain config so this has things like chain id so every chain has its corresponding chain id to be able to avoid something called replay attacks uh, which i can explain in some other video and then there are like these blocks so there's this home state block dao4 block eip uh, 155 block so if there is a blockchain network uh, which time we may need to upgrade it uh, which is in such a way that it becomes it no longer becomes backwards compatible so those scenario is called hard forks and in that case we define from which block the hard fork will occur so this is the way we define it so let's say if i have this byzantium block byzantium hard fork or let's say london block for london hard fork we define this from this block height, which means, what is this, 12, about 12.9 12 million. So right after this many blocks have been mined or proposed, then this hard fork will get activated, which means a new set of rules will come into picture. Okay, so if you are trying to do a hard fork in Ethereum, then this is one way of doing it. So you can, you know, dig deeper into where, uh, where these blocks have been used and to see uh, how this is actually incorporated inside the network apart from that there is this p2p which in any blockchain network there are participants which are essentially computers and they need to communicate within each other so there needs to be a particular way how they communicate and how they find their peers because there is no single centralized entity so you need to be able to discover your peers and this is done by a particular you know p2p mechanism so that takes care of that uh, there is logging mechanisms and there is a database and there is this consensus folder as well which used to have you know you have this eth hash so before ethereum was proof of stake it used to be proof of work and during that time uh, you had to do proof of work consensus mechanism to be able to form new blocks on the network so this folder has the corresponding files so if you go to you can go to consensus.go and see these are the functions which uh, actually make the consensus happen so uh, so one of the one function is this finalize so finalize implements consensus dot engine accumulating the block and uncle rewards and setting the final state on the header so any ethereum block has there has there is there is a header section and there's this body section so inside the header there are like things which you can use to prove the validity of certain things uh, so headers are very important you can 
check a header and see if it is actually a, a block which you are looking for or not and uh, that is here difficulty dot go which i think it sets the difficulty of the um the proof of work mechanism so now it is obsolete but yeah in any proof of work mechanism how difficult it is to generate the next block uh, that is a variable so if there are a lot of people a lot of miners then it might increase if there are very little number of miners then it might decrease so that's taken care of in here most recently ethereum has transitioned to proof of stake so you no longer need to be a miner uh, you basically you no longer need to be a miner which means you don't have to like solve complex sort of problems to be able to propose the next block you will be selected to become the next block proposer based on how much stake you have there are various consensus clients right now uh, prism is one of them which is written in go so that is run along with this go ethereum to be able to be a full ethereum node uh, and what else there is this tx pool transaction pool so if you are trying to uh, build a block you first need to uh, listen to the new transactions and then only you can add them so this transaction pool uh, takes care of that this is a very quick 10,000 feet overview of this repository and I went over maybe three or four important files which I found important that may there are like several other important files as well um, in future I will make a much more detailed video on uh, video on this and also I will run it locally to see how you can run locally and do queries and maybe change genesis file and interact with the network so thank you